Thank you for watching videos by Family Travel Photos. The most famous location at Yellowstone National Park is Old Faithful, which is located in the park's Upper Geyser Basin. On June 7th, we toured the Upper Geyser Basin to take in Old Faithful and dozens more hydrothermal features. Some of these were exciting, others were breathtakingly beautiful. Watch this video for helpful tips and beautiful imagery for Upper Geyser Basin. This is an excerpt from our June 7, 2021 daily vlog, where we visited several locations at Yellowstone National Park. If you want to see great pictures and hear 40 tips on visiting Yellowstone National Park, watch the complete June 7 vlog. The link is in the upper right corner. We finally arrived at the Upper Geyser Basin. Our first impression of the parking area, visitor center, and roads at the entrance for this basin was chaos. This map of the basin gives no sense of how large the parking area really is. Thousands of parking spots and several roads in a seemingly random pattern. We arrived around noon and even with all the parking spaces we could only find an open spot at the outer edges of the parking lots. Finally we reached the viewing area for Old Faithful. Take a look at how many people are sitting around this geyser. And it is about, let's see, 15, it's about 45 minutes before this is scheduled to go off. We decided we would walk around the upper basin first and view Old Faithful on our way out. If you're enjoying this video and find the tips to be helpful, I hope you'll click the thumbs up icon and send a like our way. We reached Grand Geyser at about the time it was predicted to erupt. We learned two big lessons here. First, if you want a seat for this spectacle, get there well before the geyser is supposed to erupt. Second, eruption times are estimates and subject to the whims of Mother Nature. We stayed for an hour and a half after the predicted eruption time without seeing the geyser go off. We finally gave up on it and continued our stroll along the upper geyser basin.
finally we reached Morning Glory Pool. It's pretty incredible. Those others are all really, really pretty too. They don't, they don't get nearly enough credit. Or mentioned. Beautiful or mentioned. This one is pretty large and really deep. Yes, but this is just spectacular. You know, there are probably five or eight places on Yellowstone that for me were a must-see that I really wanted to go see. And maybe the number one on that list was the Morning Glory Pool. And it is worth every moment I thought about it. This is just amazing. Trails down to the river down that way. It just, it doesn't even look real. It doesn't look like something on this planet. Hey, when you come to Morning Glory Pool, there's kind of a U-shaped uh, boardwalk around it. Make sure you view it from all sides of this boardwalk because the view is different from pers different perspectives. But it's just amazing. We left Morning Glory Pool and headed back toward the visitor center. This is Castle Geyser. Earlier in the day as we were walking out to the geyser basin, uh, we saw this one erupting. I have several clips of it erupting from different angles. Now we're a little closer to it. This is Crested Pool. It smells a little worse than the other ones. So one tip that I think everybody should, should think about, yes, the gift shop is there, and it's very tempting when you first get here, but I have seen more people carrying, for five miles, a brown paper bag <laughs> with heavy things in it sometimes. So save your trip to the gift shop, gift shop until after you've toured all the, the uh, geysers, because... You know, who wants to carry a brown paper bag all over the park? As we approached the Old Faithful area, we met an unexpected greeter. An older male buffalo sat alongside the trail and calmly watched everyone pass him by. We got to the Old Faithful seating area with about 30 minutes to spare. That gave us a chance to rest our feet before watching the big show. After the eruption, we decided to go to the gift shop and the car. The stores and the roads were all packed. What made it really bad is that we couldn't remember where we parked. We paid for that mistake. <laughs> Monique and I have already given you some tips for Upper Geyser Basin. I've listed those out on the screen as a reminder. Pause the video in case you're making notes. Here's some more tips for Upper Geyser Basin and Old Faithful. We found the National Park Service's Yellowstone app to be worthless, and this held true throughout our visit to Yellowstone. No matter where we tried to use it, even at the hotel, it would not update geyser eruption information for us. You can try it for yourself, but don't rely on it. Get information about the geyser schedules from signs at the visitor center. If your arrival time fits with the geyser schedule, try to go to Old Faithful Geyser first, then walk the basin. If you can't do that, hang around the Old Faithful seating area for 15 or 20 minutes after it's done erupting to let everyone clear out. You will enjoy the gift shop more and suffer less traffic when leaving. We arrived around noon and as you can see the line for the restaurant is insane. Monique planned ahead and packed lunches for us every day so we didn't need the restaurants. If you do, plan your arrival time accordingly. Use the restrooms at the visitor center before going out into the basin. That said, we did find one bathroom at Riverside Geyser. 
take the inside trail as you go from Old Faithful to Morning Glory Pool to see most of the hydrothermal features. Then you can come back a couple different ways. You can return on the inner loop the way you came. Or you can take the outside loop. The outside loop is a boring walk with only a couple features along that path, but it's a shorter walk than if you backtrack on the boardwalk. We walked about four miles as we went around the basin. Virtually all of the basin's trails are boardwalks or asphalt, so it's very accessible for people with mobility issues. Check the map for a few steep areas that may present problems. Wear sunscreen. Our sunscreen hats did a terrific job of protecting our ears and necks, but we should have worn sunscreen on our faces and hands. The basin is wide open with no trees to offer protection from the sun. In these conditions, at this altitude, walking this distance, water is a serious issue. Make sure to carry some with you. We didn't and we were really struggling by the time we got back to the car. Parents, please monitor your children. We saw so many kids running on the boardwalk or, in the case of this brat, walking off the boardwalk intentionally. You're supposed to stay on the boardwalk. Good idea. People just don't understand how dangerous it can be to step off the boardwalks, and doing this is harmful to the fragile basin environment as well. And frankly, I shouldn't have to be the one to tell somebody else's kid to follow the rules. If you take kids to the geyser basins, bring the responsibility to keep them safe along with you. The visitor center closed really early. We tried to go in there around 4.30 or 5, and it was shut down. Check the schedule before you go. We didn't have any problems with bugs there. Monique says the sulfur chases away the bugs. Expect any geyser basin to be a high wind area. Hats get blown off very easily. Also, you will find the temperatures fluctuate dramatically. Things get cooler with the wind, and then they suddenly get much hotter when you're near a hydrothermal feature. Dress in layers. For photographers, my thoughts are similar to what they were with West Thumb. You'll use a wide angle to moderate telephoto lens most. Longer lenses may help for catching a faraway geyser. A polarizer will cut the glare on the water. Bring a lens cleaning kit with you. It's almost guaranteed that you will get steamed or even sprayed by the geysers. We're close enough to be catching some of the spray. Clean your lens frequently to avoid spots on the pictures. Don't take a tripod on the narrow boardwalks for safety reasons. Use a monopod or a gimbal for stabilization. You can shoot at this basin almost any time of day. If you get there around sunrise or sunset, you may have difficulty shooting some features depending on the direction of light. Remember, we visited several locations at Yellowstone National Park on June 7th, including West Thumb Geyser Basin, the Continental Divide, Kepler Cascades and Upper Geyser Basin, which features Morning Glory Pool and Old Faithful. For 40 travel tips and great imagery for these locations, watch our June 7th daily vlog. Click the eye icon in the upper right corner and select the vlog to watch it now. On screen is another excerpt showcasing a different place at the park, so be sure to watch that now. You'll also find a complete playlist of all our Wyoming videos. Before you go, please subscribe and click the bell icon so you'll be notified when we publish again. And as always, please leave a comment below.